How's it going everyone? This is Tom with RedmanPie.com and today I've got a very interesting video for you. As I'm sure many of you are aware, iOS 7 has been released by Apple. The developer's preview is out. This is iOS 7 Beta 1. Uh, I'm running it on my iPod Touch 5th generation. As you can see right here, it's available for the iPhone 5, 4S, 4 and I believe uh, the iPod Touch 5th gen right here. No iPad support currently but that will be released periodically. Uh, I'm going to be walking through you a few of the main features. Uh, obviously there's an absolute ton to cover, I can't cover everything in this video, however uh, I will cover the main bulk of what is new in iOS 7. So first off we just have the design and as you can see, uh, mainly just the app icons, it's incredibly different to iOS 6. You get a very flat interface, it's a lot more colourful, um, it's, it's got a lot of stick on Twitter and uh, various different blog posts recently because it's not the most consistent thing. For example, the Photos app up here and the Game Center app here look quite different to the camera app up in the top right hand corner. So, you know, it's all down to personal preference, it might well grow on people, however for now, a lot of people aren't happy. I personally quite like it, it's all down to personal preference. Uh, there is an absolute ton of different things in iOS 7. Uh, so, for example, the settings app, as you can see, it's very, very different to what we're used to looking like, uh, and it, uh, so it's a lot flatter, and that is the main thing. I'd say that um, there's a lot less depth in the operating system. You get a lot of um, Helvetica new, the font, the thin typeface that they're going ahead and using, and it's just a very flat uh, user interface. I personally, I quite like it. I think that it's a lot more universal. Um, even though the settings app, I was, I quite like the settings app in uh, iOS 6. However, this definitely is an interesting design choice. So moving on, there is some more redesign things such as the notification center. I really like the notification center on iOS 7. You get a lot more detail. For example, you have the stocks information here. Uh, I don't have anything on my calendar, but you would get calendar uh, information down the bottom there. You scroll up, you get your reminders. Uh, it looks much more uh, all-inclusive. There's a lot more information available to you. So that is the notification center. You can also, if we just go ahead and lock our device here, um, and open it up, you can see that you can access your notification center directly from the lock screen. And you couldn't do that before. I'm a big fan of that. So, uh, you know, they're making good changes in this operating system upgrade. Talking about the lock screen, we have uh, a new lock screen design. You don't get the slide to unlock bar with a camera anymore. You still get the camera grabber up there. You can slide it up. Uh, we'll talk about the camera in a second, but if we lock our device again quickly there we go um, and you can slide to unlock just like this but you can slide anywhere on the screen which is quite interesting so uh, you can't slide this way like that however you can just slide so if you slide slide on the clock you unlock and you get a really nice unlock animation Okay, so going back to the camera app I showed you briefly there, we have a totally new uh, user interface on the camera, so uh, it's it's very different to what we're used to. However, you get a lot of new features in this, actually. So, uh, we, so you can see that you've got the HDR toggle in a much more um, user-friendly place than it was before. You had to kind of toggle it up here. You get the flash. Uh, it's very flat. Again, this is going to be a recurring theme. Uh, let's flip round. You can see that right there. Hi, I'm there. Um, let's flip back. You see that you just swipe across to switch your uh, camera mode. So you swipe across for video, swipe across for photo. You can swipe across for square, which is cool. Uh, so you can shoot directly for apps like Instagram, which require a square photo. You can scroll over to panoramic. You get, uh, you will wait a little bit and you get a panoramic view just like that. Pretty standard. I will go back to the square and I'll show you the filters. So you can actually uh, pick a filter which you like, uh, what you'd like to use on, uh, the picture that you're choosing. So for example, you've got a uh, transfer and process. Looks pretty cool. I don't know if this is going to take off above Instagram. However, it's a nice addition to iOS anyway. Of course, this is just a developer's preview. It's uh, only an iOS beta 1, so we're going to see lots of improvements. They normally go to uh, beta 4 or 5. So we'll get lots of additions, lots of new stuff uh, in these betas, but it's very fluid. First impressions is I'm very impressed with Apple's uh, design choices and also their just fluidity. It's uh, a lot less buggy than iOS 6 was at this stage. 
Something very cool I wanted to show you was the control center. So if we swipe up, you can do this universally from anywhere now. So if you swipe up from the bottom of your screen, you can also do this on the lock screen, which is nice. We get a toggle system. Finally, Apple are answering our prayers uh, with a toggle system for the iPhone, uh, iPhone or iPod Touch or iPad. So as you can see here, you get a airplane mode toggle and that toggles on uh, all of the other stuff. You can take that off. You get a Bluetooth toggle a do not disturb toggle and an orientation lock toggle. So useful, finally they're putting it in. You get a brightness slider like this. You can, uh, of course, just change your brightness up and down. Uh, you get the media controls, pretty self-explanatory. This is instead of the uh, app switcher, which we'll talk about in a second. You get AirDrop. I'm not gonna be able to show you AirDrop fully, like the full functionality, but it's essentially, if you've used AirDrop on a Mac, it's very similar. You can transfer contacts. Uh, photos between devices running iOS 7. Uh, you also have the AirPlay toggle down at the bottom just like that and then we have some apps so you can go to uh, toggle on a flashlight we can start a uh, timer, I believe this is, so that that goes to the clock app. You get the calculator, so I'm not I'm not 100% if you can customize this, but you have a quick app launch bar at the bottom. Okay, so we chatted just a second ago about uh, multitasking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double tap my home button and as you can see we get a fully fledged multitasking system on iOS 7. Now this is just gorgeous. I, I've been waiting so long for a feature like this. I've been jailbreaking for a long time. Uh, I have my own YouTube channel which I do a lot of jailbreak content on and this is one of the things I love about jailbreaking, the uh, app switcher alternatives. You can just swipe up to close on applications just like that. Uh, if I wanted to close Tweetbot there, you just, it's very, uh, it's very nice. We don't have this tiny little thing down the bottom. Uh, so I don't believe we can uh, kill all apps at once yet. But even then, it's still uh, a lot quicker than the hold and tap and stuff like that. So uh, all on the whole, I'm pleased with the multitasking functionality of iOS 7. I also just wanted to chat quickly about folders. Now, folders, uh, well, not great on iOS 6. Yeah, we were only allowed 12 per uh, folder so it's just not a very good system but however they have enabled paging on folders if I had 12 apps uh, 12 is that right no if I had nine apps in this I could scroll over just like this as you see here uh, and that would allow me to access a ton more folders uh, to store much more applications for example I have a folder on my iPhone which is full of all the Apple apps that I don't use but I don't use so many Apple apps that I have like two folders full of it so I'll be able to put those in the same one which will be incredibly useful I also just want to chat about Siri for a second. So if we hold down on uh, my home button, you see that we get the Siri user interface uh, and you, you've you got this beautiful bar at the bottom. This shows you, uh, you talking. As you can see, I'm talking right here and then you just tap it and it stops. It won't be able to interpret this. I believe there's a lot more functionality as well. For example, um, oh wow, that's, that, <laughs> that's a bit confusing, uh, but Wow, look at what it uh, interpreted. Anyway, there's a lot more functionality, so you've got a lot more uh, commands and stuff like that, so they're making Siri a bit better, which is always good. However, I like the user inter interface uh, they, they've supplied with this. I wasn't a big fan of the uh, iOS 6 one, the one with the whole linen background. I just thought it was a bit kind of naff. There's an absolute ton of features in iOS 7, as I've mentioned before, and I'm not going to be able to cover all of them. However, I will just mention a few definitely honourable mentions that uh, need to be mentioned, just I don't have time to go into massive depth on them, such as iRadio. iRadio's uh, Apple's new radio service. I'm in the UK. It's currently only for the US, so that is a bit of a problem. However, it is there. If you're in the US, you will have iRadio functionality. You can add numbers to block lists, so you won't receive uh, phone calls, messages, FaceTimes, all of that good stuff. You can just totally block them, which is an extremely useful feature, especially if you're having a problem with a stalker or something. FaceTime audio is also another important one to mention. This is essentially just phone calls via FaceTime. I believe it's only Wi-Fi, only over Wi-Fi. However, uh, that's basically just phone calls for free and you don't have to use up your minutes. So very useful on that as well. So to be honest, guys, that is the main bulk of iOS 7. There's a lot of new stuff. It's going to be something that you build on. So you're going to be noticing a lot of changes in a short space of time. Uh, there is just a ton to cover. I wasn't able to cover it all in just one video. The main bulk of what you're going to be noticing is UI changes, changes to the user interface of Apple's uh, operating system which I'm a big fan of I really like it you get this beautiful parallax kind of system that when you move your device like this you can see the um, 
home screen actually the home screen wallpaper actually moves you can also have dynamic wallpapers there's a lot to cover and uh, that, I think that's the biggest advantages of operating system changes like this is that we don't uh, necessarily know straight away all of the things which are coming out and things just kind of will touch on you over time and you'll pick up things about the new operating system that you really enjoy Personally, for me, I'm a big fan of this change. I think it was duly needed, and I might not be able to keep my jailbreak because I might want to upgrade my iPhone 5 to iOS 7 because I'm enjoying it so much on my iPod Touch. If you have enjoyed this video, definitely subscribe to the Redman Pie YouTube channel. If you did enjoy, give this video a like, and otherwise, I will catch you in the next one.